and welcome back. Today's lesson is on sleep. Once again, I'm Tiffany Calvert, County Extension Agent for Family and Consumer Sciences. And with me today, I have Chad Mosley, owner of Are You Sleeping? I figured with uh, the topic of sleep, I would call in the experts. So Chad, just tell me um, some of what you know about sleep. Uh, so, you know, a lot of you have probably read or heard that sleep is extremely important. Uh, some of you, probably most of you, feel like maybe you don't get enough sleep. Uh, and it definitely affects you know your day so um, it's really important for me to get enough sleep so I can come in here and do a good job in my store and it's really important for me to know um, you know what are the causes of good sleep and bad sleep so I can help my customers when they come in uh, to, to pick out a situation to make themselves sleep better so I know a good routine before bedtime um, and we've kind of hit on that a little bit just by uh, turning off the television not looking at your cell phone right before you go to bed um, with children is especially to have a good routine you know a good, good bath it's a story time it's like you have to prepare yourself and prepare your body to know what it's time for it's time to go to sleep yeah um, we're creatures of habit um, human beings are and they call the sleep schedule for a reason um, because you need to be on a set schedule if at all possible um, a lot of people say, you know, they're not getting enough sleep because they have too much stuff to do in the evenings when they get home um, and they can't get enough sleep. They're going to bed at midnight and getting up at 5 a.m. Well, so that's your sleep schedule is midnight to 5 a.m., but it needs to be 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. So maybe before your bedtime, schedule that. Schedule the time from you get from when you get home to the time you get ready for bed um, and try to work it out to where you're consistently getting to bed earlier. You know, the, the average adult needs between seven and nine hours of sleep. And a lot of people will hear, well, you know, nine hours, that's, there's no way I can sleep nine hours a night. And you may not have to, but for me, it's about seven hours for me. Um, there's a lot of people that, that sleep four or five hours a night and think that, you know, I'm fine with that. Well, there's a small percentage of the population that is okay with sleeping five hours a night, but there's a lot of people that sleep five hours a night and think they're okay, but they're really not. It's affecting them, and they really don't realize it. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot. There's a lot to be said about having a good schedule and yeah. a good sleep schedule. And of course, children need more sleep than adults. Exactly right. So I know some kids what need 11 hours. Yeah, children and teenagers, um, they'll almost <laughs> dictate to you how much sleep they need. Yeah. I think a lot of times, especially yeah. young kids. Um, but you know, teenagers. <laughs> I remember when I was a teenager, I, I wanted to sleep really late during the day, and of course, my parents wanted me to get up. Yeah. You know? Uh, but it's it's necessary, you know. I, I stayed up a little bit later back then, so I slept a little bit later. Yeah. But I was getting, you know, right. eight, nine, ten hours of sleep. Right. That was good because I was a very active teenager, and a yeah. lot of teenagers are. So. So I can remember as a teenager um, sleeping later into the day. I actually took black trash bags and put <laughs> over my bedroom window so yeah. the sun would not wake me up in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember when I was a kid, uh, my mom would come wake me up for school. Yeah. And she would she would come in and shake me and say get up and then yeah. she'd go to the rest of the house and finish getting ready. Mm -hmm. She would always come back in about 15 minutes later to make sure I had gotten up because yep. I had a habit of staying in bed. Yep. So what I would do is get out of my bed and crawl under it and go back to sleep. So when she came back in, <laughs> she couldn't find me anywhere. I was getting extra sleep, yeah. but I wasn't getting ready for school yeah. on time. So, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's important for adults to get seven to nine, um, and then for for kids and teenagers to get even more than that. So. Yeah, I know for myself in the mornings, it's always best that I set my alarm at least 15 minutes before I really need to crawl out of the bed. Because just when the alarm goes off for the first time, just mentally inside, if I know I can lay there for 15 more minutes, it just makes my day um, a whole lot brighter. Sure. So when people come into your store, like what are some things that I would need to know about my sleep habits in order to find the right mattress? Um, sometimes the pillow makes a difference. It does. Yeah. So sleep position makes a big difference. Um, if you have any breathing issues, you know, acid reflux, snoring, those are all factors that, that you want to consider when you're looking for a new mattress. Um, I have people come in all the time talking about um, this hurts or that hurts or um, you know, I feel like I can't breathe when I sleep or I have really bad heartburn, things like that. And there are, there are ways um, and different things we can show you in here that may help alleviate some of that. Um, and it's everybody's different, you know. Um, we can't say this is good for you, this is bad for you. You have to help us make the decision. So when you when people come in, I always ask them, you know, what what's what don't you like about your mattress or what don't you like about how you're sleeping? Mm -hmm. And then we kind of start to 
get some details and we narrow things down. So, um, you know, a lot of times a stomach sleeper, um, they'll come in saying they're not sleeping well and, and they'll be on a soft mattress. Well, a stomach sleeper on a soft mattress may not be the best because you're going to be sinking down in it. It's going to be putting pressure on your neck. Um, so a lot of times a stomach sleeper may be better off on a firm mattress, um, maybe with a thin pillow because it's not putting a lot of pressure on your neck. Um, like I said, everybody's different. You know, that may not work for you, but, you know, generally speaking, if you can kind of start off leaning towards that direction, you can really get it narrowed down to what will work best for you, for you. Yeah, and depending on, I guess, what brand or style of mattress, do they have different lifetime, you know, can I expect my mattress to be good for 10 years, 5 years? I mean, does it depend on which mattress you get? Yeah, it does, um, and it's, you know, it also depends on the sleeper, too. Uh, people wear mattresses and furniture differently. Um, and, you know, body type has a little bit to do with it, but a lot of it is, you know, like for for example, a couch or a recliner, do I throw myself into it every time? Do I, you know, do I really put a lot of pressure on it when yeah. I'm getting in and out of it? So that's do the just, kids jump on it? Right. It's just an example of, yeah. you know, uh, how different people can influence uh, the lifespan of their mattress or furniture. But for the most part, um, I tell people you want to shoot for your mattress to last you eight to ten years. Um, if you get longer than that, that's fine. Um, we don't really recommend keeping one for much longer than 10 years. Uh, and th there's a few reasons for that. Um, one is usually a mattress kind of um, degrades over a really long period of time, so it's a really slow process. You'll be sleeping in it every single night, uh, and it'll be such a gradual process that you won't notice it. Um, and then 10 years later, you go on vacation, you sleep on a hotel mattress, uh, and then you come back home and you're like, wow, I did not realize how bad my mattress was. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, if, and that happens a lot of times. Um, and then another thing is, is when you, and this is a story I tell people a lot of times, but uh, when you get a brand new mattress, it weighs a certain amount of pounds, right? Let's say it weighs 100 pounds. If you have that mattress for 20 years, when I take it out of your house, it's going to weigh more than it did when I put it in there. So you can kind of use your own imagination to figure out why that might be, hmm. but uh, it's usually not a pleasant thought. Yeah. So that being said, it's kind of a gross way to think about it, you know, it's dead skin, things like that, dust mites, it all yeah. builds up in there. It so does. you don't really want to keep that forever. Right. Um, you know, it, even if it still feels exactly the same as it did when you first bought it. Yeah. It's probably and I know you think out. this, that a mattress and a good pillow is a really good investment. And that's what you need to think of it as. Yep. You know, you always pay for what you get. <laughs> that's right. And so when we spend a majority of our time, a third of our day, mm -hmm. sleeping, yep. then we want to invest in something that is going to help us out. Exactly. Because um, I know um, when I'm tired, the next day I might as well just you know, start all over because I don't, I make poor decisions, I'm not a, as productive at work, grumpiness, you right. know all the things yeah. that lead to it's, You're exactly <laughs> right, so sleep. you don't think as clearly when you, you don't get enough sleep. Um, your body actually physically is not as healthy when you don't get enough sleep. For example, if you are, uh, say you're really into weightlifting, trying to build muscle mass, if you don't get enough sleep, you're not going to be able to do that as effectively, so it's important to um, if I was trying to, you know, bulk up, which obviously I'm, I'm not, <laughs> it's never going to happen for me. But if I was, I would really want to concentrate on getting enough sleep because when you sleep, that's your body's time to recover. Yeah. If you're not getting enough of that, your body can't recover as quickly and therefore I couldn't pack on pounds of muscle as easily as I could if I was sleeping every night. Sure, and usually when you go to the doctor and you have some sort of illness, mm -hmm. the first thing that they say is get enough sleep. Yep, sleep, exactly sleep, right. sleep, and that's how the body heals itself. That's exactly right. Um, so we hope that you've learned something today, um, and we hope that if you have any questions that you'll post that to our Facebook page. Um, and leave comments about how you discover that you're not sleeping enough, what kind of issues you're having, um, and maybe between Chad and I we can answer those <laughs> questions and, and hopefully come up with a solution for you so that you can get enough sleep and feel better and live healthier. Thank you.